Wandering spiders. Widely regarded as some of the most potent and deadly spiders on Earth, these arachnids certainly have made a name for themselves for being dangerous. Their powerful venom is capable of inflicting serious pain, organ damage, and yes, in rare cases, even death. Now, we generally think of these venomous spiders as something you might encounter in a far-off jungle in South America. But what if I told you there might be a wandering spider in your own backyard? Today, I'm headed deep into the heart of Central Florida to find a wandering spider species you might have never known was there. Why? Because that's my job. My name is Jack, and I've dedicated my entire life to traveling all over the globe to find the strangest and most dangerous animals alive. I'm willing to get in close where others wouldn't dare in order to uncover and share the truth about even our most deadly and misunderstood creatures. Today I'm on the hunt for Florida's native wandering spider to find out if these arachnids are something we should be worried about. Do they have an aggressive disposition? Are they capable of a deadly bite? Let's get searching and find out. Now, this is really, really weird for me, folks, because essentially what I'm doing today is I am searching for wandering spiders in the United States. Yes, we have our own native species, which is crazy to think about. True wandering spiders in the Tinidae group. Uh, so it's going to be crazy because I found plenty of wandering spiders. We just found a huge female Phonutria depilata uh, back in Ecuador earlier this year. And now I'm in my home country of the United States looking for more wandering spiders. So we're going to be flipping tons of logs. We're going to be searching this amazing, fantastic forest. And uh, that's pretty much going to be our MO today is checking under stuff because that's where these lovely little Florida wandering spiders are going to be holed up. And whew, I'm hoping it's going to be really cool if we were able to find an American species of wandering spider today. <laughs> Now, these spiders were proving more difficult to find than I had anticipated, so I began to take a different approach in my search. A lot of these wandering spiders, they'll cling up under logs and things like that. Um, haven't really seen many over here, so I'm going to try and snake my way back out from under this log, um, because I, I think we're in good enough habitat, folks, and I think if I just really... If I really stay true to myself and 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 keep putting in the hours, I I think I'll be rewarded. Now it is just really really cool because this forest. I mean, it feels so much that it is not in the United States. This looks like I'm in some tropical country. We've got Spanish moss dangling from the trees. We've got all these lovely little palms and palmettos behind me, and just some really gnarly looking trees. So it's really no surprise that we have one of these amazing wandering spiders right here. And hopefully, I don't just get to talk about them today. Hopefully we can find one and get up close and personal and just see how dangerous are these wandering spiders here in Florida. These wandering spiders are close cousins to the Brazilian wandering spiders in Central and South America. They all belong to the same family, Tenidae. But are all Tenids dangerous? While we know many of the Brazilian wandering spiders in the genus Phonutria are medically significant and can cause some serious damage or even death, what do we know about other Tenids? Well, this family of spiders is related to another family, Lycosidae, a.k.a. the wolf spiders. In fact, our Florida native wandering spider is often referred to as a false wolf spider because of this relation and morphological similarity. Now, we know wolf spiders and their bites are pretty much harmless other than some inflammation and itchiness. But where on the spectrum do these Florida wandering spiders reside? Closer to their deadly cousins to the south, or their twice-removed cousins to the north? We'll have to dig a little deeper to see. <gasps> oh my gosh, dude! You got one? I got one. It looks like a little male here. Oh, I see him. Can you see him from there? Yeah, I can see him. Oh, 
he's gorgeous. Okay. He's just sitting underneath. He hasn't moved yet, but these are so explosively fast. All right, folks. Let me see if my animal catching prowess will work for me today. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Right there. <laughs> Florida wandering spider. This is the wandering spider we have here in the U.S. This is a small male, but still a good-sized spider for this species. The females get even larger, but this male, I'll take him today because we've been out here for hours, folks, and we finally got our lovely, lovely little true tenant, our true wandering spider out here. And uh, I think it's time to get intimate with our wandering spider. Let's take a look here, folks. These are fantastic little creatures. I wanna carefully coax him out. Look at that. Oh, that right there, that's exactly what we wanted to find. These wonderful, wonderful little wandering spiders are true spiders, and they are, of course, relatives to the much larger, much more dangerous Phonutria, the Brazilian wandering spiders of Central and South America. Now, much like their larger cousins, these animals are incredibly nomadic and use their fast lightning speed and powerful venom to overtake invertebrate prey. Oh, man, I can't believe we got this. This is literally amazing that we were able to come out here in the state of Florida, not even Southern Florida. This isn't an invasive species. This is a true native spider to this fantastic state. And uh, you would think you'd have to go all the way to, you know, the middle of the Amazon rainforest in order to find a wandering spider like this. But no, folks, we are right here in the continental U.S. handling and filming a fantastic little wandering spider. How spectacular is that? Now, the bites of these spiders are likely more serious than their wolf spider cousins, causing some fairly decent pain, inflammation, itchiness, and soreness, as well as some other flu-like symptoms like nausea, headaches, and potential vomiting. These symptoms can happen with a large envenomation from an ample-sized female, but for the most part, people don't really run into this species very often. They are restricted to the southeastern United States and prefer warm, humid environments with ample cover to hide in and hunt around. Additionally, these are fairly shy and skittish spiders, quick to flee at the first sign of danger. And I mean quick. It's their lightning speed that they rely on as a first line of defense, not their venomous bite. Like most spiders, these wanderers reserve their venom for hunting and feeding when they can, and only bite if they feel they are in mortal danger and have no other option. While not as potentially deadly as their larger South American cousins, these spiders can still deliver a powerful bite to deter predators, and are best left to be handled by wildlife experts like me, or not at all. It looks like these lovely species here in Florida seem to prefer kind of hunting in the gaps underneath logs and things like that and waiting for prey to maybe scurry a little too close. And then they'll use those really powerful legs and lightning speed to jump over, pounce, exactly like that. Jump over and pounce on their prey. These are fantastic hunters, and just like all other wandering spiders, yes, of course, they possess a toxic bite. Of course, I don't have to worry nearly as much as I was worried for myself uh, while filming the much larger Phonutria in Ecuador, uh, but sustaining a bite from this spider would likely not be very fun. If you're enjoying this video on our lovely native wandering spider, check out this video I filmed in the remote jungles of Ecuador. In this video, I actually found and captured a true Brazilian wandering spider to discover the truth about their behavior and aggression in this part of the world. Click the video card or check the video comments to find the link for this adventure. I'll see you there. These are such fantastic little spiders. And as you can see, this is not an aggressive animal by any means whatsoever. 
this lovely little spider here. He's maybe a little confused. He's a little agitated. These animals are primarily nocturnal. So he's just kind of going like, man, you woke me up and uh, I was hunting all night. I got a long night of hunting tonight. And this is when I'm supposed to be resting under my log and getting some Z's, dude. Well, what's going on? I said, sorry, Mr. Wanderer Spider. I want to uh, show the world just how fantastic and cool you are. Not an aggressive animal, an animal that just kind of wants to get away from me. He's not enjoying filming this video as much as I am, and he's not enjoying being in this video as much as your hearts and your souls are as you are captivated by watching it on the screen. He's ready to get back to doing wandering spider things. But golly, this is just easily one of the coolest species of spiders you can encounter here in Florida. They are just so absolutely spectacular. We were having a little bit of bad luck at the beginning of our trip, uh, this little uh, rocket run down to Florida here uh, in November. And it was brutal, folks. And I'm so happy we were able to turn it around with some of the coolest arachnids out there. Because, man, I mean, where else in the world other than the tropics do you get to see wandering spiders the answer is florida and uh, we are we are happy about it such fantastic little arachnids so just how deadly is the florida wandering spider's bite luckily not deadly at all while in rare cases this bite could escalate for the average person this would be little more than an inconvenience while they are related to deadly spider species, these spiders do not find themselves in the same proverbial weight class. It just goes to show that you can't judge a book by its cover or by its family either. These spiders are wonderfully important members of their respective ecosystems, and it's always so much fun to find true wandering spiders right here in the USA. Now these aren't our only native wanderers, and perhaps I need to seek out the rest of their family tree here in the States to see if we have any other truly dangerous wandering spiders in our midst. Well, my friends, I think we had a fantastic time with this lovely male wandering spider here in Central Florida. So I'm actually going to assist him in finding his way back under this lovely little log that I stole him from. Come here, pal. It's all right, you're going home. Going home, going home. Look. Oh yeah, he loves that. Oh, and there he goes right into the dark crevices to await the night when he can come back out and uh, stretch his little wandering spider legs and get something good to eat. Oh, that's so cool. Well, folks, that's just about everything I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope maybe I taught you something you didn't know. Maybe you were completely unaware that there was a wandering spider species here in the great state of Florida. And I hope that you enjoyed getting to learn about that. And I hope that you're not scared that there's a wandering spider in the United States. As you saw, not an aggressive animal, not something that's out to get you. And you, I mean, we were out here searching for hours. You kind of have to be looking for these spiders to run into them. Nothing to worry about, just a cool species that just adds to the diversity of our wonderful United States. So thanks so much, my friends, for tuning in today. I really enjoyed teaching you about this spider. I hope that you learned something, but if you didn't get anything out of this video, you didn't enjoy it, you weren't entertained, you didn't laugh, you didn't learn, you just hated every second and you're still here, well then, my friends, I hope I can impart a little bit of wisdom with you right now. This planet is full of some fantastic diversity from the creepy spiders all the way to the fantastic world of mammals like you and like dogs and cats and bears. But my friends, every single creature, whether it's creepy and crawly or whether it's cute and cuddly, they all serve a vitally important role in their native ecosystems. Every single one of these organisms out here, the plants, the fungi, the bacteria, the animals, they all basically create a stable web. They create the health and the vitality of their ecosystem. And if we took any one of these groups of animals out, this entire environment could collapse in on itself and implode. So just something to think about. Yes, there are creepy crawlies. Yes, there might be some scary stuff, but they're not here to hurt us. And they only serve the roles that they are built to serve in their respective ecosystems to maintain the health and vitality of 
our planet as a whole. We benefit from that. We definitely need a healthy planet to live on, folks. So thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope I could leave you with something there. I hope to see you next week with the next upload. But honestly, folks, until then, please take care of yourselves. And uh, hopefully, I will see you next time. Take care.